Hello guys, so I thought I'd do a quick video about my physical PS4 game collection. Make that distinction because most of them are PSVR games and that system has quite a lot of digital only releases. There's a lot of indie titles of course, so yeah, as a consequence there's a lot of uh, digital only. Um, and it kind of makes sense as well, from one respect, for the PSVR, you know, to, to buy games digitally. And of course that's because then you can switch between the games whilst having the headset on and it's really... Uh, convenient to just go between games you know if they're all digital only but um i've actually found that the reverse is my preferred way of playing psvr games and that is to say that i actually like to have a little break in between each game uh i think that helps um yeah because i don't know the, obviously the, the extra immersion and stuff the experience of playing the vr game I like, I like to come away from it for a minute before putting another one on. So I actually like that process of taking the headset off and waiting a little while and then putting another game in if that's you know what I'm doing. So yeah, so it works for me to have physical games even on the PSVR. Uh, and yeah, obviously all, all the usual benefits of having physical games. You know, when you're done with it, you can sell it and put it towards something new. You actually own the game. You're not as reliant on service support that kind of thing. Um, yeah, my misses has a PS Vita and uh, she buys the vast majority of her games digitally. And she's also the type of person that kind of sometimes will buy a game without knowing much about it. So there's a certain success to failure ratio to her game collection, you know, she doesn't always get into them. So especially from that point of view, it makes sense to buy your games physically so you can get something back off them once you're done. Uh, but she doesn't do that. She buys ma ma mainly digital games. Uh, but I'm mentioning this because She's bought her first PS4 game, and she's been playing it quite a lot, uh, and it is Prey. So, yeah, pretty cool front cover. Of the original, I really enjoyed it. I don't remember a hell of a lot about it, apart from the basics, but it was a game that Carla, my girlfriend, was really into. She really enjoyed the first Prey, and uh, so she was excited to get this. And again, not reading any reviews or anything like that. And as it turns out, the changes that has been made to the gameplay don't suit her style of play. She, you know, it's they've got a high, a heavier focus on stealth, and uh, there's certain aspects of the game that have been changed up, and uh, she's not quite liking it actually. She has played it a lot. She's given it a chance, but she said that actually it's a bit of a disappointment. So, but since it's her first physical purchase, or since she got it physically, she can get some money back of it and uh still pretty new so get something back worth it but yeah she got this, this kind of special edition and uh, of course it's got the steel box which is uh, a nice steel box but i just don't get this whole dual box release it's just so weird like so i've, I've got all this business i only really want one i can't put the disc in two boxes at once so one of these is superfluous and we'll get stored away somewhere else i don't know it's just weird I don't get it Sell it, sell it in one or the other, separately, surely. Weird. Anyway, oh, soundtrack as well. But yeah, so apparently a bit of disappointment. Uh, I'm going to have to get her to make a, a review video or something, because she had a lot of uh, kind of amusing points about it. So we'll see what happens with that. Anyway, my latest addition to the PSVR physical game collection uh, just came today, and it is Job Simulator. This is a US release. This didn't get a physical release in Europe. And it's just, it's fucking funny. I tried to briefly describe this to someone at work. I said, I've got this game called Job Simulator. And he's like, fucking Job Simulator? What? Yeah, it's uh, set in the future. You have this robot civilization that is trying to understand the lives of humans in the 21st century, or 20th century. And so they have this job simulator to see what it was like to have a job as a human and of course it's just their uh, kind of uh, slapstick kind of uh, over the top parody of uh, human mundanity but it's actually really fun so of course it's with move controllers and you're just dicking about doing various things in, in these different jobs and uh, it, it's amusing it is it's cool it'd be a good one to show off PSVR to, to to your friends because yeah it's again one of those games that's stationary so you're unlikely to get any motion sickness you know, and you're just moving around and you can just play, basically just experiment in a really simple, intuitive way by picking things up and doing things. 
So it's a good one to show off. I have noticed I've got one or two tracking issues with this game. Uh, I don't know if that's my fault or not. You do have to be careful about how you set up your PSVR and make the most of the setup to get the best tracking and all the rest of it. So we shall see. But on the whole, a lot of fun. Uh, one of the first games I got was PlayStation VR Worlds. Uh, this came with the, the bundle I got the headset with and it's brilliant. It's such a good uh, introduction to VR because it's got a variety of different uh, ways of using you know, um, uh, the technology. And I've talked before already about the heist, which is a really cool kind of a lock, stock and two smoking barrels style situation. It puts you in this uh, gangster story. And it's got shooting elements and they're really fun as well, using the move controllers. Light gun games in PSVR, in VR in general, are another level. Uh, there's uh, Once you're done with the story on here, there's obviously on, on the heist, you've got um, shooting ranges and they're really fun and there's leaderboards as well. So that got addictive. For the first time in my life, I got a little bit addicted to trying to get higher on a leaderboard. Never been that, been that bothered about those. But it's, uh, it, was, it was quite fun to do that on the shooting ranges on, on the heist. Uh, I think I'm up to quite high on uh, like, like 50 odd for the week. Not all time, for the week. 50 odd, something like that. Or maybe even been 20 odd on one of the, uh, one of the, uh, uh, the shooting ranges. But it's a lot of fun anyway. So, But on this uh, disc, there was one game that I'd kind of been ignoring. I don't really know why I'd not tried it uh, for the first week or two. Oh, since I got it, basically. Um, but I jumped in the other night, and it is Scavenger's Odyssey. Holy crap. I hadn't read anything about it. And when I played it, it's one of my most fun gaming experiences I've had. I ever. I can say that without a shadow of a doubt. It's very impressive. Scavenger's Odyssey on PSVR Worlds. Uh, you're in a mecha kind of thing. And you're in this kind of space environment and you've got powerful lasers and various other control uh, methods open to you. You can jump uh, and there's a really good sense of movement throughout the game. You're grounded though. I didn't get any motion, sick whatsoever, motion sickness whatsoever. And that's probably mainly because uh, you, know, you do have this sort of cage around you in the sense that you can see this mecha uh, robot thing that you're in. But I would say that's probably one of the games that you need to wait before you play. You know, I said in previous videos that you need to start off on less hectic, less less um, less dynamic games. And I think that's important because it helps you to develop your VR legs, you know, to get used to uh, that disconnect almost between, you know, what you're really doing and what's happening in the game. But I think I have pretty much got my VR legs, so they're, they're getting there, definitely. Uh, because Scavenger's Odyssey didn't make me feel rough at all. In fact, I found that it gets to a point that you will still feel a kind of, uh, you know, um, what's the word? A lightness in your tummy, you know, <laughs> the physical feelings of movement. You'll still get those, but they will be t to the benefit of the game. For example, in Scavenger's Odyssey, when you jump, it goes quite high up, and I do... I, did kind of get that little feeling of uh, of movement as if I was actually jumping through the air in this high arc in this huge mecha robot uh, but it benefited the game because it actually helped helped it feel more real so rather than being any kind of motion sickness it was just that kind of oh what's, I don't know how to describe it that kind of almost uh, nice feeling that you would get from going around the corner in a roller coaster or something like that um, it added to the immersion of the game, basically. But I think that is, yeah, maybe something that will come with time when you get used to VR, when you get your VR legs. I wouldn't necessarily, I wouldn't think necessarily that that would uh, be possible straight from the get-go when you first start playing VR. Maybe it is, I don't know. That was a bit of a ramble, but, uh, yeah. Yeah, Scavenger's Odyssey is fucking amazing. It's only quite a short uh, game, though. And I really hope that the developers that made that are planning on doing something longer along the same lines because that works so well. Uh, very, very good. And one of my most fun gaming experiences ever is not an overstatement uh, for that. Anyway, moving swiftly on, uh, Call of Duty Infinite Warfare has got a VR mode. It's free to download and uh, you're in space. It's a space kind of uh, um, dogfighting level. 
and it's very similar to the Star Wars uh, X-Wing VR mission. Uh, th <laughs> this is probably actually a little bit better than the Star Wars one in terms of the graphics are a little higher uh, quality, um, the action's a little, I think it's a little better, but it's very similar. Uh, but it doesn't obviously have the Star Wars sound effects, which raises any game experience up a few notches just from having this the Star Wars sound effects. Uh, and that, yeah, I guess that's the next one to talk about is the, the Star Wars mission on Battlefront. Um, apparently, uh, Battlefront Star Wars Battlefront Two is going to have VR content as well. Fingers crossed, it's going to be have a lot of VR content because oh man, it'd be nice to go on a speeder through the forest and whatever other Star Wars scenario you can think of. It's all going to be better in VR. Because uh, this worked really well. The VR mission in this is fucking brilliant. I'm going to run out of superlatives. Because this whole thing has been a hell of a lot of fun. Okay, so rigs, I haven't tried this yet. This is the number one game that people report having motion sickness with. So I am still saving this until I feel like I'm fully prepared for it. Uh, yeah, it's not far off. I'm probably about ready for it, but I'm still waiting. Again, take your time. Bed yourself in to the VR stuff. Because, uh, yeah, it's unlike any other gaming experience, You there is a certain physical process that you go through getting used to the technology used to do this stuff. Uh, yeah, anyway. Res Infinite, um, really cracking shooter, uh, lovely looking, really smooth graphics. The 120 uh, hate hertz screen, which gives you really high uh, frame rates, um, is perfect for shooters. And this is beautiful uh, example of what that screen can do. Uh, you know, despite the low resolution, uh, it's got other benefits and the, uh, yeah, the high frames per second are, uh, are a real bonus for VR. Um, but you know what? I played this a, a little bit, but then it quickly kind of got superseded by Polybius, which unfortunately is a digital only game, but I had to get that. Jeff Minter's um, most recent game, and of course uh, the guy who made Tempest 2000, the original Tempest, which it turned out Carla used to play when she was a kid. And one night we got talking about random forgotten things. She said, there was this game she played that she tried to vaguely describe. And I was like, oh yeah, that's Tempest 2000. I've got it in the back room on Saturn. She's like, what? I thought she meant 2000. She meant the actual original Tempest. And she played it on the Acorn or some shit like that. And of course, Tempest 2000 on Saturn has got the original on there as well. So she played that and she was loving it. And then Plebius came and says, look, this is by the same guy. Check this out. She hasn't checked it out yet. But <laughs> it's going to blow her mind, I hope, in a good way. Polybius is amazing. I really wish that I got a physical release. Um, so trippy. And But yeah, that game took over from Res in terms of the shooting that I've been doing, shooting games on PSVR. And obviously, similar look, the vector frames, graphics that are the, uh, rather the kind of uh, retro, kind of um, neon lines, graphics, whatever you want to call it, very simplistic, very stylistic, and it it's similar to Res, I guess. Um, well, not in the shooting aspect, you know, because Res, you're tracking across enemies and shooting through a 3D space, whereas with Plebeus, you're shooting down a effectively quite linear level. But there's similarities, basically. Anyway, Plebeus took my attention away from Res, is what I'm trying to say. God, I'm rambling today. Let's get on. Here they lie, another one that I haven't tried yet, another one that is notorious for potentially causing motion sickness, so I'm still waiting to play this one. I don't want my experiences with these more uh, hectic games to be ruined because I'm not ready for them. It is something to take into consideration. Uh, Super Stardust is a pretty simple shooter. Um, if you know the uh, game, there's been a long, rain, uh, long history of them. And this one is much the same. Although there's a VR mode where you get to be first person as well. Um, I played it a little bit, it's alright. Hasn't bowled me over. Mirror's Edge, a non-VR game. Beautiful looking, uh, continuation of the same smooth platforming uh, gameplay, the original that I really, really enjoyed. Um, haven't played a hell of a lot of it yet, but I've enjoyed what I have played. Uh, Call of Duty Advanced Warfare and uh, Call of Duty Black Ops 3. These were both gifted to me by, by a friend of mine that came around. 
obviously came around uh, here now. Uh, yeah, my mate gifted me these. Um, they're, they're fun, enjoyable games. Carla really loves these games, so that's a big bonus to the collection. Nice one. Cheers, Brian, for that. I haven't played either of them yet, though. E Valkyrie, back on the PSVR. Another dogfighter in space, uh, and it works brilliantly. And I was surprised that I didn't get motion sickness from this game. And, uh, yeah, I've never been able to really gel with a dogfighting game where you have that six degrees of freedom before. I've never been able to really grasp the controls on a normal screen, but in VR, it becomes so much more uh, intuitive to play this type of game because the simple fact that you can move around freely to look around to where your next move is going to be or points of reference that you have lost or uh, just to get a better idea of your overall surroundings. For example, you know, you can, you're can shooting straight forward where the reticle is that's controlled by the thumbstick. Uh, on some games but whilst doing that you can still look around for other enemies that might be coming or other places you need to be going towards whatever it makes three uh, six degrees of freedom gameplay a lot more intuitive um vr does so this is brilliant <laughs> basically um i some people have reported uh, again um motion sickness with this one maybe it is one that you need to wait a little bit before you play um i've already played it and felt absolutely fine but through all these, yeah, I, I do kind of hold, well, personally at least, it's not, VR, you're not going to be playing it for hours and hours on end, you know. I think I'm a, I've probably played for a couple of hours uh, in, in sittings, usually, a couple of hours, if, if usually a bit less than that, you know, take the headset off again, take a moment, go to a different game, that kind of thing, but in terms of like one, one long, uh, un, unbroken session, two hours is probably... The max that I've done so far. Battlezone, uh, really fun tank game, based of course on the old classic. Uh, this looks brilliant. The sense of scale that you get, not just with this game, but with a lot of these games, but this one especially, the sense of scale you get of these arenas that you're moving around is really impressive. And uh, yeah, the vector graphics look great. Um, is this multiplayer? I've not played, yes it is, I've not played any multiplayer VR games yet, but that's uh, going to be really brilliant to do because, of course, being in these game worlds is one thing, but being in the game world with somebody else and communicating, cooperating, or, or challenging is going to raise it up so much. And there's a lot of games that are going to do interesting things with multiplayer coming. Star Trek Brig Bridge Crew is one of those. And, uh, yeah, if you've not heard about it, you're basically sat at a terminal on the bridge in Star Trek with a bunch of other people over the PSN and uh, they're all at their own little stations and you work together to solve missions and communication is needed and the rest of it, it just feels like something pretty unique yeah VR is going to be uh, an interesting thing when it comes to multiplayer of course local multiplayer is done differently um, there's some games that people in the same room as you can use the TV to play along with you and that's cool as well haven't done any of that yet either all my VR gaming so far has been purely single player, uh, but it's, it's all to come. <laughs> it's fine. Um, another import, uh, Batman uh, Arkham VR. Again, didn't get released in Europe. I don't know why. This is a really brilliant experience. Um, yeah, it's quite short, but it's really high production values. And of course, with this being new technology, of course, the early games on it were going to be um, restricted in terms of budget because there was, isn't that market yet there yet to justify huge budgets. The eternal catch-22 of the gaming industry. You know, what came first? The platform or the game or the killer app? Whatever, yeah. Um, obviously, the platform came first. What am I talking about? It's similar. It has similarities. Basically, they weren't spending a lot of money on games to begin with because nobody had it. Uh, but this shows that there is scope there for a triple a vr title because it has this has kind of you know high production values but it is short uh but it shows what can be done and it's really fun and it has some brilliant uh moments in it that just ground you into the vr world um when i'm talking about these games i don't really want to give away too many kind of spoilers as to things that happen in the games that that aren't already known that obviously known because a sense of discovery is quite important in VR, I think, as well. Uh, yeah, so I wouldn't want to give away any of the surprises. Or, you know, I, I, you shouldn't really be watching too much gameplay of VR games, that, uh, I don't think, because 
well, some of them at least, because you don't want to spoil the surprises of things that you're going to see, you know, in these things. I mean, it doesn't matter with, like, shooters or, you know, multiplayer games or whatever, things that are repetitive, that doesn't matter. Um, and if you watch gameplay videos, you're still not going to get anywhere near the experience of actually playing it in VR, of course, because if you haven't got your headset on. Um, but I don't know where I was going with that. Next game is Until Dawn, Rush of Blood. Um, it's, yeah, a light gun game on a ghost train um, roller coaster. And it's quite spooky. It is quite spooky. It's brilliant. The high contrast really helps with this game because a lot of it's in the dark, of course. So this, the screen, again, it comes into its own with that high contrast, the really deep blacks and such. Um, but it's a lot of fun, yeah, just like guns in VR, man. Brilliant. Last one is Dirt Rally, for which you can then buy... Is it, I think, did you buy it? I think it was, I don't think it was free. I can't remember now. You can get the VR mode for it, which makes the entire game playable in VR. And uh, rally games are something I haven't played for a long, long time. Not since the original Sega Rally. Um, but this game has reinvigorated my interest in that genre. Uh, because playing in VR gives it that extra you know, thing that just makes it compelling. Uh, again, it's that ability as well to be able to move your head freely whilst piloting or controlling the thing that you're in. So you're driving along, of course, with the thumbsticks. And you can look around corners, you know, into corners, and it just helps it with... Because that's what you do, obviously, in real life, is you would look into a corner when you're turning. You can't do that, at least, obviously, when you're in the cockpit view on a TV. So it just raises the gameplay up that extra level, and I'm actually able to play it. I'm usually absolutely terrible at uh, rally games. Uh, but playing this on VR uh, just, again, feels more intuitive. And it's really cool being in, inside that car... And uh, it's one of those games, uh, many first-person VR games do this, it gives you an entire body to look down at. And again, one of those developing tricks to just drown you in, the, in those worlds. Um, so when you see your entire body kind of reacting, not perfectly, but still reacting to your head movement and everything obviously moving with it, it's just a little trick to help you with that uh, suspension of disbelief. And it comes back again to what I was saying in the last video, is you do have to meet it halfway you know let yourself be amazed you know yeah you know suspend your disbelief and let the technology take you somewhere and don't be pouring over little glitches here or there or little you know inconsistencies or whatever as long as it's not breaking the game you know you're still going to be able to <laughs> have a trippy experience with vr man it's really fun it is really fun so that's my uh, physical game collection um yeah let's know if you want to do an overview of my digital game collection as well because uh, there's some really fun indie stuff and uh, coming out on VR that show the potential of it. You know, the budgets aren't there, but the ideas are already there. Um, so, yeah, that might be another video coming soon. Anyway, guys, see you later. Bye bye.